to get. Jesus lays it down in this passage. I want us to see his call, his mission. I want us to understand his ministry for us today. In these verses, Jesus clearly states the truth about himself and his ministry. Thousands of people turn their backs and simply walk away. When the crowds leave, verse 66, Jesus, with his aching heart, asked these 12 disciples his inner circle. He asked the board members, Do you want to leave too? See, Jesus is saying to them, Do you still want to hang with me? Hence, the sermon title today is simply Hanging with Jesus. Hanging with Jesus. A whole congregation, imagine over 5,000 people. You know 5,000 can't hold in here. And then when Jesus speaks, we only have two benches left. Six on the front and six on the second bench. We are reminded though that in the end times, people will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. 2 Timothy 3.5 In this text, there are some things that I want to leave with you right now. When you hang with Jesus, you can handle the truth. Can you handle the truth this morning? Can you handle the truth, church? The fact of the matter is that while not everyone walks away from the Lord, some do. If we take the passage as the answer to that question, why is it that people leave the church? I think, and I want to suggest to us, that part of that reason is that not everyone can handle the truth. The chapter unfolds and becomes increasingly clear, no doubt, that, 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 that there is hostility mounting against Jesus. Not because you do something great that you're morally correct, that you're kind, that you give to the poor, that you won't face opposition. Don't think because you're nice that everyone is going to like and appreciate you. <laughs> the people wanted to make Jesus king. Why? Because he gave them bread and fish. When Jesus speaks and gives them the mission, the vision of what ministry is all about, now they say, mm -mm, we don't want to have nothing to do with you, Jesus. That's not what we were expecting. Why the change? Jesus told them the truth. Jesus is speaking his mind. Last night I said that you're, you, 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 Jesus says you can only be hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. You can't just be tepid. You have to be one or the other. Well, after this sermon, it appears that that Jesus' words were too hot to handle and too cold to hold. Jesus says, Jesus says here, Jesus says, first of all, I am the way of salvation. I am the Son of God. I am superior to Moses and man. I he says, outside of me, there is no other. And the brothers looked around and said, what? <laughs> this carpenter from Galilee, this illegitimate son of Joseph, saying he is the one greater than the prophet Moses? This brother is out of his mind. You see, there are two possible reactions that you can give today to Jesus after this message. One is, you can accept it, I said it last night, you can accept it, or 
or you can deny it. What will you do with Jesus today? Will you receive him or will you reject him? People receive the truth when they see it for what it is. Truth. People reject the truth for many reasons. Some people misunderstand the truth. You remember Nicodemus, right? Nicodemus thought Jesus was talking about gynecology when he was actually speaking about the new birth. The woman at the well thought Jesus was talking about plumbing when he was actually talking about himself, the water of life. The man at the pool of Bethesda thought Jesus was talking about a rescue mission when he was actually talking about placing faith in Jesus. And today, church, that trend continues. God not only wants to baptize you, he wants you to be saved. Not only to be baptized, not only to do Bible studies, but he wants you to be a saved individual. You can have head knowledge, know about doctrine and church and how we function, but you could be on your way to him. Some people not only misunderstand the truth, some people are opposed to it. Don't think that because it's right, people are going to say, oh yes, this is the way to go, let's walk in it. Really? Jesus reveals to us that not, that's not the case. These Jewish folk were in constant and increasing opposition to Jesus. In fact, they tried to kill him and eventually they got what they wanted. Not only did they oppose it, but some people are just blind to the truth, church. All the way through this passage, the Jews have this approach to Jesus. Show us, and we will believe. They had already seen him feed the 5,000, the multitude, with five, lo five loaves of bread and two fish. They surmised that he walked on water, crossed the lake, and yet they were still blind to see what is mission and vision for them on us. The sad fact is that all of us were blind at some part in our lives, some point in our lives, and today we too need the eye stop. We need Jesus to allow us to see his will for our lives. And that's why some people reject the truth and embrace the lie because the truth as they want it to be is not acceptable. So they would rather you lie to them. There's a song I heard some time ago about a, 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 two, a, a two individuals, a couple, who was in a adulterous relationship. And, and, and the, 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 the young lady was singing and, and she was saying, Tell me a lie. Tell me that you're not married. Tell me that you don't have kids. Tell me that there's not a family waiting on you at home. Tell me a lie. There are people who prefer to hear the lie than the truth. Some people want the experience but not the expectation. Some people who were following Jesus were satisfied with, with the material things, with what they could get, the fleshly appetite. They wanted more of the same. Jesus didn't want to prove to them that he was greater than Moses. That was not his point. What they wanted was a miracle. They wanted, they wanted Jesus to, to create some great thing for them to see, to accept that he is, in fact, the Messiah. And you know what? We find the same mentality in our churches. There are many who want just a religious experience without the expectation. What do I mean by that? They want to serve God for what they can get out of it. Without any concern for his glory, without any concern for his will. They want entertainment and excitement without the commitment that comes along with the proclamation of the truth. They are only concerned about themselves and how they feel. Imagine for a moment how the disciples felt when all the 
other people walked away. That must have been something. The church was full to capacity. Full! People were standing room only, if you please. And after one sermon, the church went down to 12, and one of them was not even saved. I hope this is not the only sermon. I hope you'll be back at four. The point is, not everyone can handle the truth. Sometimes the truth is tough. Sometimes the truth makes demands upon our lives. Sometimes the truth is brutal and it seems unfeeling. But the truth is always true. It is always right and it's always perfect. Not everyone can handle the truth, can you? And when you hang with Jesus, not only can you handle the truth, but when you are hanging with Jesus, when you are wrapped up and tied up in Jesus, nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden. Everyone lives in a glass house, and your relationship, everything in your mind, is open to Christ. You think you can hide from Jesus? Huh? You can't be an ostrich. You know what an ostrich does, right? Sticks its head in the sand when danger comes about, you know, and pretends that no one is seeing him. It's an interesting thing to see. Danger is coming. It's being attacked. And if it, if it, it suddenly it sticks its head in the sand, and voila, it's okay. Really? Let's listen to what Jesus has to say to us. In the passage, we see the truth that Jesus wanted, why the multitudes were following him. Jesus knew the deeper secrets of the hearts of those who appeared to be most committed to him. When the Lord looks at your life, Today, what does he see? Does he see absolute commitment and faith? Or does he see a life that wants the experiences but lacks the commitment? The harsh truth is that he sees you and me just like we are. He sees us in, in ways that we cannot even see ourselves. Nothing can be hidden from him. Naked before the Lord. Not Zacchaeus in the tree. Not Peter by the Roman fire. Not even the hearts of the hypocritical Pharisees. Not even Judas Iscariot, who was numbered with the twelve. Jesus knows when we are faking it. Mm -hmm. Ah. Can't hide from Jesus. He sees us for who we are. While I can't see what's going through your mind right now, and believe me, I don't really want to know. Jesus sees what's in our hearts. What does he see, church, when he looks at your mind? 